Well, hello, everybody. I'm going to set the stage for you. Here's the scenario. Your mother-in-law has just called, and she is coming in an hour. What do you do now? And I have an answer for you. It's called Crisis Cleaning One-on-One, and I'm going to talk you through it. We're going to set some timers. We're going to take care of ourselves in the process. We're not going to panic. Now, let me reiterate that. We're not going to panic. Because when you start looking at the big picture, instead of one thing at a time, you spin around like a chicken with its head cut off, and you can't function. So here's what we're going to start with. I want you to get a bottle of water. I want you to grab a cheese stick or something to eat out of the refrigerator, some protein. Let's let's get some food in us real fast because we only have an hour. And we're going to get started. Now, you don't want to look like a hag when your mother-in-law gets there. So look at how you're dressed right this minute. Do you have on lace-up shoes? That's we got to start with lace-up shoes. Are you? Do your jeans look pretty good? And you, let's throw on a different T-shirt. But you can do the, throw on the different T-shirt right before she walks in the door because you're going to be working pretty hard right now. So I'm setting a timer for three minutes, and we're going to head to our kitchen. Now, in the kitchen, when the counter surfaces are piled up, your kitchen looks messy. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on some hot soapy water in the kitchen sink. Now, if you've got dishes in the sink, put them in the other sink and fill up one side of the sink with hot soapy water. You go in there. Okay. Now, while you're doing that, I'm going to talk to you a little bit. Now, we're still not going to panic. We're going to take this slow and easy. We're going to focus on the dishes and the counters right now. So as the water's running in your sink, I want you to open up the dishwasher. And is it got clean dishes or dirty dishes in it? Now, if it's got clean dishes in it, we need to put those away. It's going to take less than two minutes to do that. So let's start putting away those clean dishes out of the dishwasher so you have a place to put your dirty dishes as you clean off your countertops. Now, we're not going to panic. We're going to think about what we're going to do next while we're doing this, but we're going to stay focused on what we're doing right now. Don't let the water run over in the sink because you're hyper-focusing on emptying the dishwasher. So turn the hot water off in the sink, and let's start putting those crusty pans from on top of the stove into the water because we're going to spend 15 minutes in the kitchen, three minutes at a time. Right now we're focusing on the kitchen sink and emptying the dishwasher. That's all we're really doing. We're we're going to get some stuff soaking so you can get them in the dishwasher and hide them because this is what this is all about. It's hiding the way we live, and we can't beat ourselves up about this. We've just got to take care of ourselves and get the house looking presentable. And in 15 minutes, the clue here is to spend 15 minutes in your kitchen, 15 minutes in your living room, and 15 minutes in the main bathroom of your house. That's where, in case she might have to go there, you've got to make sure that everything's clean or everything looks presentable. It may not be uh, white glove clean, but anybody that's going to come in with a white glove in your house doesn't need to be there. And you can just meet them at the door and say, just turn around and go home. If you're going to come in here with a white glove, I don't want you here. And guess what? You get to do that. You really get to do that. So you're focusing on the dishes in the kitchen sink and in the dishwasher right now because we've got to have a place to put them. And we're going to be fine. It, things, you know, you've been sick. I mean, the family, it's, it's flu season, for God's sakes. And things are tough. And we've got to stay focused on what we're doing. And it also helps to have some good music. So here's our timer. It's going off. That timer tells us we need to swap jobs for a second. So, okay, now let's, you need some more music? Put some more music on. We were going to run some music with this, but everybody likes different music. We may edit some music in in a little bit, but we'll see how that works. For this next three minutes, we're going to focus on the stove. The stove, let's you cannot hide anything in your stove. 
no pots and pans with dirty dishes in them, no plasticware, nothing gets hidden in the stove. Because you know what happens? Stoves get turned on because we forget that we've hidden stuff in it. So that is not going to happen here. We're going to take the pots and pans that are on the stove and we're going to put them in the hot soapy water. Got it? Got it? Okay, we're going to start moving everything around to the kitchen sink. Moving things around the counters to the kitchen sink. I want you to grab your Windex bottle and a, 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 a hot soapy rag. And we're going to stop wiping down the counters. This isn't going to take that long. We've got two minutes left on this three minutes. And we're going to start moving things around. And and as you do this, you're you're moving things from the outside toward the center where the sink is. Got it? Let's stay focused on what we're doing. Now, is there any food that's left out? Let we that's got to go back in the refrigerator or in the pantry. And let's make quick work of that. We've got a, a minute and a half to go. We're moving pots and pans to the sink. And we're going to wipe down the counters. And we're doing this in a fast-paced motion. And I'm telling you, we can do this. It's not going to be hard. She's not going to be uh, be very critical because, by golly, you're going to get this done. And I'm right here with you. So get get your music playing. And we're going to dance around this kitchen and work our way toward the center, toward the kitchen sink, because that's the foundation for our whole system is keeping your kitchen sink clean and shining. We can do this. You can do it. I can do it. I can help you. And we don't. once you crisis clean, you're probably never going to have to crisis clean again unless you've been sick and things have gotten, gotten to you after you've, after you've been, uh, the whole family's had the flu. It's tough. Or if you've been gone for a few days and things kind of fell apart while you were home. There's lots of excuses, but what we're doing now is we're going to take care of business, and we're going to take care of of getting this clutter and chaos out of the way because when the surfaces are clear, the room is going to feel clean. You got it? We can do it. Don't don't beat yourself up. This is going to be fine. She probably just wants to come over and see the grandchildren, and you can't blame her for that. So here we go. We've done three minutes, and now we're going to focus on something else. Here goes the timer. Doesn't that feel good? You've done three more minutes. I think there's a big go me for you on here. Okay. Next mission while we're in in the kitchen. We're going to uh, look at the dining table. What's on the dining table? Let's pull the dirty dishes off the dining table, work them toward the sink. We got three minutes. We're going to clean everything off the dining table and put it in the kitchen sink and start loading the dishwasher with the dirty dishes. Fifteen minutes in the kitchen is going is a world of time, and you can accomplish this. Fifteen minutes. We've already done two three minute sessions. We're on our third. So this is amazing what you're getting done, and it's starting to come together. Can you tell? All of a sudden, your kitchen is feeling clean. Even though it's a disaster, and that's okay, it's it's getting better. It's progress, not perfection. We can get this done. Now, as you get the things off the kitchen table, look at what's on. Have you got a, a pretty bowl that you can just plop in the middle of the table? Maybe it's a, a pretty casserole dish, or, or it's a fruit bowl that you can set in the middle of the table, or candlesticks. Just put some centerpiece in the table. Because when the table has a centerpiece, you're less likely to junk it up and to leave dishes on it. So we're going to get those. We're going to go back to the kitchen sink. We've moved everything off the kitchen table, and we're going to start washing through those dishes and putting them in the dishwasher. You know, if the the crusty ones by now, we've had six minutes for them to soak. They ought to come pretty clean, pretty quick. And we're in fast-paced mode here. We got our music going. We're enjoying the process. We're not beating ourselves up. We're we're doing what we can to get this done before she gets here. Because if the kitchen is clean, the whole house is going to feel a lot cleaner. You got it? Now, what's the trash look like? Is the trash overflowing? We can bag that up and get that ready to go out out to the garage. 
let's breathe. I'm 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 getting out of breath here myself just talking you through this. We can do it. Boy, can we do this. It's going to be okay. That's not the timer. That's my phone going off. You can't answer the phone while this is going on. You got that? We cannot answer the phone. We can't look at our emails. We have to stay focused. You got it? We're staying focused on the kitchen for right now. We're not leaving the kitchen for anything. You got your lace-up shoes on, and we'll deal with the floor in a minute. Don't look down at your shoes. We'll deal with the floor in a minute. Don't beat yourself up. We can do this one three-minute session at a time. We got eight more seconds, and we can go on to another another job. Okay, here we go. Here's the timer going off. Oh, y'all are so good. What we're going to do now is we're going to gather up the trash. All the trash is going to go in the trash bag, and all the trash is going to get thrown away and bundled up. So let's make quick work of it. And see, what happens in the kitchen is when you're working on something, doing something, you don't throw the trash away while you're dealing with it. You you say, I'll do that later. Well, do that later causes it to pile up on the kitchen counters. So as we get something out, we we use it and then we put it back where it belongs. We pick up after ourselves. It's quite simple. But we're always in this big, mad rush, and I don't want you to ever have to crisis clean again because crisis cleaning is hard on us. Crisis cleaning is is tough because we're rushing around and we don't get to rest like I want you to. I want you to work for 15 minutes and then rest for 15 minutes. But when you're crisis cleaning, you're doing three 15-minute sessions all in a row, and it's it's tough. So we're gonna we're gonna put on some fast music and we're gonna enjoy the process because music makes it go by. I'm telling you, when you got the right music, the music that you like, sometimes it's even a different type of music. Than, than you're used to. Something's got a fast beat and gets your feet a moving and your hands a moving. Because we know to do better, but we don't know to do it. We got to get up and do it. And doing it is what gets it out of our minds so we don't have to be put in this situation ever again when you get that phone call that the mother in law is coming. Now, you mother in laws out there that are listening to this, please don't drop in on your daughter in laws. With only one minute, one hour notice, that's not fair. <laughs> Unless you know that they've always got their house fifteen minutes worth of messy, and that's our goal here is just to stay within fifteen minutes of of getting it clean. Because that anybody can do that. Right now you're under a little stress, but we're going to be calm about it, and we're going to be okay. We're not going to beat ourselves up, and we're going to be just fine. So. Let's stand back a second and look at how the kitchen's coming together. You've already spent almost 11 minutes in your kitchen. Isn't this amazing at what you can get done in 11 minutes? We've got four more minutes as soon as the uh, five more minutes after the three more minutes after the timer goes off in 30 seconds. We've got the kitchen table cleared off. We've got the stove cleared off. The countertops are working toward the kitchen sink, and we've got. We've got the trash bundled up. So here's what we're going to do next. Are you ready for it? The timer's going to go off in about 15 seconds. We keep keep on putting dishes in the dishwasher, and you're going to be good. Just get the dishes in the dishwasher. You don't even have to run the dishwasher. We're just going to it's going to become our dirty dish disposal unit. Okay, here's the timer. You've worked for a solid nine minutes so far. I mean to tell you, y'all are on the ball. Now, here's what we're going to do next. We're going to finish emptying, putting all the dishes in the dishwasher. So let's focus on the kitchen sink, and let's get all the dishes in the dishwasher. And you see, look around your kitchen. Are there any dishes anywhere else, any glasses? Uh, Leave the hot soapy water in the sink because you're going to find some glasses and things around the house. And before you know it, it's all going to get it's all going to get done. Let's don't start the dishwasher. We have um, we keep putting those dishes in the dishwasher. We've got to deal with the floor too. So the floor it probably looks pretty grody, and if you've got a rug in front of your sink, it's probably got some dog hair on it and some different things. You may just end up throwing that out the back door for the time being until you can get back to that. 
But right now we're going to get these dishes in the dishwasher and do what we've got to do to get the the rest of the countertops empty and you feeling better about your kitchen. Because when your kitchen feels comfortable, the whole house is nice. And you'll be able to sit down at the co- at at your at your dining table with with your mother-in-law and have a cup of tea. Won't that be nice? So do you have a teapot? Is it clean? Run it through some soapy water real quick and and put some water in it and put it on to simmer so that by the time she gets there, the, the tea water will be ready and you can have a pot of tea with her. Won't that be nice? <laughs> Michelle's over there kind of laughing at me, just just coaching it all right away. We're, this is truly flying by the seat of our pants. And... We are we're going to get this done. This is crisis cleaning on the fly. I'm telling you, we can do this and we can do it and not be stressed out. I know it's hard, but and we can't play the martyr either. We're going to have fun with it and we're going to enjoy the process. Now, you can do it and you can do it effectively if you want wine. No whining allowed. Let's just get it done and grab a drink of water real quick. And let's see what else we've got to do. We've got one more three-minute session. And guess what? Did you know that you can you can mop your floor in three minutes when you have to? I'm telling you, you can sweep it real fast and then mop it. And get you might not even have to mop it. You may just need to um, just get the the dirty places up. <laughs> but we'll see. You you look at your floor and see what needs to be done. While you're finishing the dishes, going in the dishwasher and getting everything out out of the sinks. Now let's breathe a little bit. Breathe in and breathe out. And there goes our timer. Okay, we got one more three minute session. And in that three minute session, we're going to put the trash out out in the garage and we're going to do the floors now bag up the trash so you can have that out so you don't have to walk over your floor and then let's get some hot soapy water well let's sweep it first let's sweep the floor real fast sweep 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 and wherever you keep your broom grab it and let's just get the corners you know sweep around things we're not we're going for the middles here I mean, you get underneath if there's some dog hair and things. We got pets in our house, so we got dog hair floating around everywhere. That's just and puppy toe prints all over the floors. So let's let's get the let's get the broom out and let's then let's look at the floor and see if it needs to be mopped real quick. Now, don't become a perfectionist about mopping this floor. This floor has been dirty for a long time and it's not going to get clean. And in one three-minute session, we're down to two minutes left in the kitchen, and then we're going to take a, a, a big, deep breath. But right now, we're going to get the floors clean so that they look halfway decent. They're not perfect, and I wouldn't eat off of them, but by golly, they'll pass inspection, and that's all that all that mounts. It counts. And if you have to, you take a, a, a towel and you... Fill it full of hot soapy water and put it on the floor. Pam and Peggy call this slipshod cleaning, and stand on it, and then just walk around the walk around the floor real quick. I mean, grab a dirty towel and just do it. It makes it easy because if the wet towel will get the most of it, and while you go into the living room to to work on the next 15 minutes, you your floor dry and everything will be good. So we got one more minute to work on our floors. Those floors, every little mess. You know how to keep the messes from from uh, pile, making the sticky messes in the floors? When you spill something, you grab a towel or a paper towel or a rag and you wipe it up and not let it sit there. I keep a bottle of Windex under every sink in my house. And when you have a spill, you just squirt some Windex on it and by golly, it comes right up. Windex has just a little touch of ammonia in it. It's a great floor cleaner. I used to just clean my floors with water and ammonia. But Windex does a great job. And in a pinch, you spray it and wipe it. Spray it and wipe it. You can get the worst of the puppy toe prints up, and you got it clean. 
So one, just take it slow and easy. I know I'm rushing you, but we're gonna we're not gonna panic because believe it or not, in 45 minutes she will be here, and maybe she'll be running a little late, but probably not. But we'll just laugh if she's early. Okay, there goes our timer. Now, what I want you to do right this minute is take a big deep breath and breathe in and breathe out. And we're going to go on to the next room. You got it? Kitchen looks pretty good, doesn't it? You spent 15 minutes in there. You can get it done in 15 minutes. You didn't know you could do that much in 15 minutes, did you? Okay, we're going to start our next session. And we're going into the living room. Now, the living room is pretty easy to keep clean. If you, all, if you only had vertical surfaces in your living room, your living room would always look clean. But we have tables in our living room. We have coffee tables and end tables and units that have our TVs and things in it. So what we're going to start with is clearing out our hot spots. You got it? You got coffee tables, you got end tables, and they're piled high. Now, there's things on those coffee tables you haven't dealt with. There could be mail, there could be lots of things. So I want you to grab a box. A box that uh, that you're not going to throw away. Maybe it's a laundry basket. Maybe it's a little Rubbermaid tub. And I want you to rake everything off of that table into the box. Now, this is speed cleaning at its best. Because we're going to put this in a place where you'll have to deal with it. Now, I hope your mother-in-law is not going to spend the night and have to use your shower or your bathtub. Because that's where we're going to put this box. We're going to take everything that's on the coffee table and put it in a box. And we're going to label, this is the coffee table. We're going to put a piece of paper right on top and say, coffee table. Because you know where things were. And if you move them, you're never going to find them again unless you know where you've put it. So we're going to take this little box and we're going to put, rake everything off into the, into the box. And then we're going to go set it in the bathtub. Now, I know this sounds stupid. You'll you'll get back to it if if you'll do it this way. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the box and we'll rake everything off into the coffee table box, and then we're going to take everything and we'll grab another little box and we're going to grab everything that's on the other end tables, and then we're going to put those boxes in our bathtub. This is speed cleaning at its best. Now look around. What do you see? Stuff on the floor. Gather everything up into a laundry basket that's on the floor. You got it? You've got DVDs and things sitting out. Put them back where they go. We can do this. This is, I mean, it only takes two minutes to do a hot spot fire drill when we're not hurried. Now, if, if you want to try to put some of this stuff away, that's great, but don't hyper-focus on putting things away when we've got to just make it look presentable. Another thing we got to do while we're in the living room, and we're going to do this in the next three-minute session, is we're going to feather dust. So grab your, because we cleared off the flat surfaces. When you clear off the flat surfaces, you're good to go. So here goes our timer again. We're going to go in for our next three-minute session. Our next three-minute session is going to be feather dusting. So grab your feather duster. And we're going to feather dust everything in the the living room and in the front room of the house when they first come in the house, that entranceway. We're going to feather dust all of that and, and put everything, you know, in, every flat surface has to be empty because when the flat surfaces are clear, the house looks clean. Isn't it amazing how clean a house can look when every flat surface has been emptied? It, it's just uh, we allow our procrastination to cause our houses to look messy. So this is, is kind of funny when you think about it. The, th the thought that we don't have time to do something makes this happen. So we're going to feather dust our, our living rooms and our front rooms, and before you know it, everything's going to start looking pretty good. Now, I'm not asking you to get out the, the furniture polish. We're not going to detail clean. We're just going to get the gray haze off the furniture. 
and we're going to put them put the magazines where they belong in the magazine rack. If you got too many, let's put them in a box for recycling. You got it. We're we're doing really well, and I forgot to set my timer that time, so I'm going to move it down to. Oh, let's see. One. We'll go to two minutes because that was about a minute ago. Anyway, we've got here. Here we are in in the living room, and we're on our second. Three minute session, and we're feather dusting. Now, the living room is already looking pretty good. You scraped off everything off of every flat surface, and now it's easier to feather dust. And we're putting the newspapers where they belong and the magazines, and wow, this room is going to be amazing when you get finished. Because when your mother in law walks in the door, that's the first thing she's going to see is, is your entrance and your living room. And the kitchen is going to be over to the side unless she comes in through the back door and she comes straight into the kitchen. But you done got that one covered. The kitchen is clean and you're coming into the living room. So take a breath. I need to breathe. And we're doing great. You're doing great. I'm rattling on trying to keep you motivated into doing this. And we are going to get this done and things are going to be fine, believe it or not. It doesn't take long to get your house clean when you stay focused. And we can't multitask. We have to stay focused on one job at a time. And that one job at a time, right now, what you're doing is dusting. You're dusting the flat surfaces. You're dusting with a feather duster. You don't have to pick things up. You can dust around it. Hold it like a pencil and just flick it around. And before you know it, it's going to be clean. Now, in our next three-minute session, we're going to grab our Windex bottle and we're going to get the some paper towels or a rag and we're going to clean our windows. So let's put our feather duster away and let's grab the Windex and we'll be ready to go and the timer's going to go off in just a couple of seconds and wow, this is two sessions already. I'm telling you, we're on our third session and we are headed into third session now. Look at the floors. What's on the floors? Do you have magazines piled on the floor? Have you raked some things off in the floor that shouldn't be there? Or what about the the comforters that you have and the pillows in your kitchen in your living room? So let's let's look at how the the room is going to look. What is out of place right this minute? Let's grab up the the comforters and fold them and put them where they belong. Let's put the pillows on the couches how they go. We all like them a certain way. And let's make let's arrange the cushions. Now, what's sticking out from under the couch? If it's sticking out, let's push it back under there just a little bit so nobody can see it. This is this is the ultimate stash and dash, I'm telling you. And we can do this and it's not going to kill us. Now, what else looks out of place? Have you got any glasses and things in the in the living room that need to go, any plates and dishes that need to go into the kitchen? Let's get them in the kitchen. But you probably already raked those off into those boxes. But we'll it'll be okay. We'll get them in a minute because as soon as she leaves, you're going to have to pick up. You're going to take those boxes and put everything away one box at a time. You got it? As soon as she leaves, you're going to finish this crisis cleaning and you're going to be so excited with the way the house looks and feels because you've spent this 45 minutes doing this. You got it? We can do this. It's a go-me moment here. I am so proud of you. It's amazing what you can get done when you just stay focused and you're not distracted by your cell phone, by your house phone, by the TV, by, you know, the computer. You're staying focused. You got it? And I'm talking you through it, one baby step at a time. Isn't it amazing that baby steps can get us to where we need to go if we just put one foot in front of the other and not beat ourselves up in the process? Okay, here's what's coming up next. We've we've put everything that's out of place in where it needs to go that's on the floor. The magazines, the newspapers, all the recycling has been put where it needs to go. You folded up the pillows. Uh, the blankets and the pillows and the cushions look pretty good. So when you walk in the front door, what you see is a room that 
for all intents and purposes, it may not be white glove clean, but it's it's clean enough. And that's all that matters because clutter is what makes our houses look dirty. Clutter is what makes us feel bad. And when we get the clutter off the flat surfaces, we will be just fine. Now, here we go. With We're going into another three-minute session. We've now done nine minutes in the living room, nine whole minutes in the living room. We're going in for another three-minute session. And in this three-minute session, we're going to vacuum. Or do this, do, if you've got hardwood floors, you're going to Swiffer and 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 dust mop and do what you got to do. You may have to get that wet towel and go over the floors to get the puppy toe prints if you've got hardwood floors. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this full three minutes and we're going to work on the floor. So grab your vacuum cleaner. We're just doing the middles. We're not moving any furniture. We're staying right with the middles. I hope you've got your headset on so you can still hear me as you're vacuuming. And we'll just keep going. I'm telling you, you're getting it done. After we do these three minutes worth of vacuuming, you'll have uh, another three-minute session. And we'll, I'll tell you what we'll do then. And it is amazing at the progress you're making. Fifteen minutes in the kitchen, fifteen minutes in the living room, and our next room we're going to be in will be the main bathroom. And it might not even take you fifteen minutes in there. Now, the kids' rooms in your room, you're just going to have to shut the doors. Um, it's just it's hard, but I know she's probably going to want to go into the kids' room. But if the kids are home, you, you give them an order right now for them to go in their rooms and get their toys and stuff picked up. Got it? Because the toys in the living room need to go into the kids' rooms. Let's play a game with them. Let them throw them in a basket. But give them some direction while you're doing the living room floor. And, you know, you can delegate some of this stuff, too. If you've got a, an army of, of children there that that are big helpers and that they like to help, and that's what we're trying to do. We're teaching kids how to, to jump in and be a part of, of home home blessing hour. It, it, you're, you can get this done, and you can do it easily. All you got to do is just stay focused on one thing at a time baby steps because when we put our blinders on and we accomplish this one thing then we can go to the next thing but when we try to focus on 10 things at one time we get nothing done that's when we're spinning around in our in one place and trying to figure out where to start and nothing really gets done don't be distracted by the telephone or by the tv or by the radio you stay focused on what you're doing the only thing you can do is if there is a tornado warning, you have to go to your basement. But right now, we're focusing on getting your home in order. So when the doorbell rings and it's your mother-in-law, you're not going to be embarrassed. And we're never going to have to do this again. If you will start doing your routines, you are going to be able to handle Oh, there's our timer again. You can stop your vacuuming now. You've gotten as much done as you can possibly get done, and it'll be fine. It's going to look okay, and here's what we're going to do for the next three minutes. We're going to take that Windex bottle we talked about in the last session, and we're going to do the front door. We're going to do the hand prints on the front door and the, the dog nose prints and the muddy paw prints, and we're going to get the front door and the back door cleaned. And if you've got sliding glass or any mirrors, any glass that you have in your living room and your front entrance, that has to be cleaned. So that's it's what you see when you first come to the door. And if it looks good, then you're in good shape. So let's stay focused on getting those puppy toe prints. I'm looking at mine. It's raining outside. <laughs> we got muddy paw prints on our doors. But I'm not about to clean them right now because the dogs are going to go out again and it's fixing the storm and we'll be, we're will be we going to have mud for a few days. So why bother now? You can do this. we got another two minutes on this mission. We, let's, get, let's grab our Windex and let's do what we got to do to get our windows and doors clean. We're not 
you don't have to do the windows unless it's a big picture window and it's got handprints on it. But if you've got side windows on your doors and you've got a mirror that's pretty dusty, you can throw the feather duster on the dusty mirror and not have to worry about washing it with the Windex. But the the muddy prints on the doors and the handprints, they kind of need to be cleaned off. And it'll 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 look much better. You'll feel better about it. You've got the magazines picked up. You've got the cushions put away. You've done so much already in two 15-minute sessions. And the house is, is really looking good. I'm telling you, you are doing a great job. And I am so proud of you. It's I may be hoarse by the time this is over. I've never done anything quite like this. Coach somebody through a, a 45-minute session of doing their it's not a weekly home blessing hour. It's crisis cleaning 101. Now, when we do our weekly home blessing hour, we set the timer for 10 minutes, and we spend 10 minutes vacuuming the whole house. And, yes, you can do it in 10 minutes if you won't get stuck in your perfectionism. I promise you, you can get a whole lot done. But right now we're just doing three minutes, three minutes doing the dog nose prints off the front doors and the the little hand prints and all the things that – Collect on the front doors. We're going to do them inside and out really fast. And before you know it, your house is already coming together, and you are so surprised that it can be, it can happen this quick. I think this is going to be a great show to share with others. I'm just amazed that I can talk this fast and, and help you get through it. Here we go. This is the last last five seconds. Okay. We finished the living room. Now I want you to breathe in and breathe out. Wow. Well, then that feels good, doesn't it? You've gotten a lot accomplished. Now we're going to head into the bathroom. Now what do you see when you first walk in the bathroom door? Do you see dirty clothes on the floor? Have you got dirty clothes all over the place? Well, let's grab the laundry basket and let's gather up the dirty clothes and take them to the washing machine. Now, here's a secret that not too many people know and don't tell anybody. But when we need to stash and dash, we have been known to stuff the washer so full of clothes you can barely close the lid on the washing machine. But don't turn it on and don't start it. We're just going to stuff the dirty clothes in the washing. We'll get them out. We can do the same thing in the dryer. It becomes the dirty clothes disposal unit. You can also set the dirty clothes basket in the bathtub is another way to do it. And just throw the clothes in there. Gather up all the dirty clothes and dirty towels and throw them into the basket. And then we're going to put out some fresh towels because that always smells better. And then we're going to start putting away everything that's on the bathroom sink counter. Because when the sink is full, the bathroom looks messy. Now let's open up the cabinet and uh, cabinet doors and put the things that you have to use in a little basket and stick it up and under there. That way you can get it back out, because it's stuff you use every day. And that's why we leave it out, because we don't want to put it away. And you've probably got too many things in your drawers so that you could put the stuff you use every day, put it away. But you don't, you haven't done that yet, and we'll work on that later, because each month we go, we use our zones, and we go through our house, and we detail clean in that, in that room during the month. Sometime during the month, it, every room in the house, we do a little detail cleaning. And Michelle's just over there just laughing at me. She's just leaned back in her chair. She's not even getting in a tizzy. She's relaxed while listening to me. Just this sort of sing song. Uh, we're having fun. I'm telling you, we can get this done and do it. So we gathered up all the dirty clothes, and we're, we're, we're taking the stuff that's on the bathroom counter, and we're putting it away. Now, if you put it away the right way, you can find it later. If you put it away the wrong way, you got to label it and say, this was on the bathroom counter. So that when you get the basket out, and you stick that in the tub too if you had to. We can do this. I'm telling you, it's not that hard. 
it's going to be easy. Now, what else is messy in the bathroom? She's not going to be taking a bath, but she might have to go potty. So we're going to have to think about what we got to do there, and then we got to do it. Now, here's our timer. We've done our first three-minute session in the bathroom. I am so proud of you. A lot of times we let our bathrooms go until we can't stand it any longer, and then we spend four hours in there cleaning and scrubbing and doing all the things we have to do. What we're going to do now is we're going to take, we've got the countertops cleared off. Now we're going to take our bottle of Windex and we're going to spray the countertops and wipe them down. You can spray the mirror too and wipe it down and get the 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 dental floss home runs off the mirror because if you've been flossing your teeth, you've got them there, I promise you. Let's wipe down the faucets. We're not going to do detailed cleaning. We're just hitting the surfaces. Now, you've got all these toothpaste spatters in the sink. Let's grab one of those dirty towels and just you know, spray some Windex in there and wipe it out real good. You might have to scrub a little bit because if it's been a while since you've done it and you're not doing your swish and swipe every day, then you're going to have to use a little elbow grease here to get those toothpaste spatters out of the sink we can do this it's not going to be hard it's going you're going to get it done and you're going to have some time to rest before she gets here do you understand me it's going to be okay we have 18 minutes before she gets here we're good to go do not panic do you hear me we're going to breathe breathe in and breathe out Swish and swipe is part of our daily routines. When we do it every single day, our house is all our our bathroom is always company ready. Do you understand that? Now, I don't like to use strong cleaners in the bathroom. First off, I can't handle the smells, and they really make you lungs have a fit when when you get these strong toxic cleaners. I suggest cleaning the toilet bowl with something as simple as old shampoo that we don't like. And we all have that in our bathroom cabinets. I know Michelle had a bunch of it that she didn't like. And I, uh, we use that to clean toilets and things. And it's, it's just it's much easier. If it's safe enough for your hair and your skin, it's not going to be hard for you to breathe. So I keep a little crock in my bathroom with one part shampoo and one part water, and I keep the toilet bowl brush stuff sticking in it. You know, all those vases that are underneath your kitchen sink that you've been holding on to for a while, they make a great thing to put the the toilet bowl brush in. It fits kind of nicely, and it comes up out of the middle of the vase, and it sort of gets the drippy stuff off so that you don't spread it all over the place. And before you know it, your toilet is staying clean all the time. And when your toilet is clean, it blesses you. Oh, there's our timer. I'm telling you. All right, we've done two three-minute sessions in the bathroom. Now, I want you to look around the bathroom. We're going to swish and swipe the toilet. We're going to swish and swipe the toilet now. Now, if you haven't got this crock set up, then what we're going to do is we're just going to squirt some hand stuff in there or some... um, some shampoo in there. We're just going to squirt it a little bit in there, take the toilet pole brush and swish it around, and then flush it once, and then we're going to do it again, and then that's going to make the bathroom smell good the second time you do it. Just leave it sitting there. It's kind of like a deodorizer. And then we're going to look at the bathroom floor. Now, if you have little boys in the house, the area around the toilet is pretty rough. I want you to get your bottle of Windex. I want you to get your bottle of Windex, and I want you to spray the area around the toilet. I want you to get some paper towels or a dirty towel, and I want you to wipe this this dried up pee pee up, and and let's get it cleaned up because that makes your bathroom smell bad. And we're gonna spend the rest of our time, a minute and a half, doing this because this will make your bathroom smell so much better if you can get this cleaned up. Now, the rest of the floor is 
you know, you get out of the tub and you got a rug there and you step on the rug or the towel and that sort of gathers up stuff, but we forget to throw that in the washing machine. Now, let's throw that in the bathtub and let's get the broom after we get through the toilet. We're going to we're going to do the floors in the bathroom. Now, look while you're while you're still scrubbing the floor, I want you to look over at the front of the counter, front of the cabinet. Has it got toothpaste spatters on it too? And you can wipe that down after you get through with this. So we've got we've done the surfaces, we've done the mirror. Now we're doing swish and swipe. And what we're doing, we're going to do next is we're going to do the we're going to do the rest of the floor, not just the floor around the toilet. And we can do it. I mean, y'all are doing such a great job. I am so proud of you. This is going to be fun. I'm tell you're almost through. We have two more. Uh, three-minute sessions, and I think we'll be through in the bathroom. I'm telling you, it is just amazing. I can't think of anything else we need to do in the bathroom besides put out some fresh towels. You've just about covered it all. And we've got keep wiping down that toilet, and we're going to swish and swipe, wipe down the toilet seat, and oh, don't forget to lift up the toilet seat and wipe down the back of the toilet seat and the rim of the toilet because if she brings granddaddy with her too he may have to he may have to lift the toilet seat up and there's always surprises under there okay we're going for another three minute session and this time we're going to work on the rest of the floor so get your broom and i want you to sweep now not i don't have any carpet in my bathroom because it's always moist in there so i don't like carpet in the bathroom but so let's let's sweep the floor and let's see what it looks like now it's a small floor it's not like it's the middle of the kitchen so you can take a wet towel one of the dirty towels and you can wet it down and you can put some spray some windex on the floor and you can wipe this floor up really quick it doesn't take long to clean a bathroom floor You've been doing Windex around the bottom of the toilet, and it looks pretty good, doesn't it? That stuff will cut anything. So spray a little Windex on the floor or put some shampoo on that towel and just put your, put it down on the floor and put your feet on top of it and skate around the bathroom floor. And before you know it, it's going to be clean as a whistle. Now, it won't be clean enough to eat off of, but it is, it'll look clean and it'll be clean, and you will have so much fun with this. I, I just, it's just amazing what you can get done when you stay focused. Here we are. We're, we've got 12 minutes remaining before she gets here, and we're almost through in the bathroom. In fact, I think we're pretty much through. You've got the dirty clothes picked up and thrown in the shower or in the in the washing machine. You've got the new clean towels put out. They always smell good and fresh. You're good to go. I'm telling you, if you've got a candle you like to burn in the bathroom, uh, open it up if it's a scented candle and just let the scent make the bathroom smell good. You you have the mirrors cleaned. The, everything's put away. It looks good. And if the flat surfaces are clear, you're good to go. And you won't mind anybody walking in your bathroom for any reason. You you can be able to let them go and not be embarrassed. I am so proud of you. This bathroom is clean. We have 11 minutes remaining before the doorbell is going to ring. And here's what we're going to do next. I'm telling you, we you have got this done. I want you to grab your water bottle. Because I hope you've been drinking water, even though I haven't been reminding you to drink your water. I want you to grab your water bottle, and I want you to go sit down. Don't scream at me. And say, I don't have time. You do have time. And that's what we're going to do right this minute. We're going to go sit down. Do you hear me? We're going to take two minutes and just breathe in and breathe out. We're going to enjoy just pulling ourselves together and thinking about, okay, she's going to be here in a little bit. I can't look exhausted. Okay, that was our timer for our last three minutes. Here's what I want you to do. We're going to take, with our feet up and our water in hand, we're just going to relax for a little bit. It's 
not going to hurt you to sit down and rest because you have been working at super fly speed, I'm telling you. You've been going nonstop for the last 50 minutes. You can do this. You're going to sit down and you're just going to relax a little bit. You can think about what you're going to put on. Your jeans look pretty good, so let's let's grab a when we get through here, just relaxing. It's okay to think. Breathe in and breathe out. You've got the teapot on the stove with the water simmering so that you can have a cup of tea when she gets here. Breathe in and breathe out. It's going to be okay. I promise it's going to be okay. Now, I want you to go. Change your shirt because I know you've gotten messy doing this because you've been splashing some water in a lot of places and you've been down on your hands and knees. But if you need to change your pants, you can change your pants. But you've got your lace-up shoes on. I'm telling you, you have done a great job. And I want you to go pour your cup of tea. And I want you to sit down and wait for her to get there. And you will be just fine. You have done such a great job at getting your house crisis cleaned. Now, we don't like to do this often, but occasionally it has to be done. Because we get sidetracked and we forget to do our routines, but we're not going to beat ourselves up about it. We get to do this one baby step at a time, and before you know it, the house is back in, in, in shape. And you feel good about it instead of beating yourself up. You got this much done. I am just amazed at what you've accomplished. This is going to be a great tool for everyone to use so that when they have a chance and they they get that phone call that says their mother-in-law is coming in an hour, they don't have to panic. All they got to do is find this on their iPod or on their computer and you know, they have it downloaded, ready to go, and you've always got somebody coaching you through it. What a great tool for you to utilize, but we don't have to use it very often when we establish our routines. Go to the website, flylady.net, and you can take care of these things. I am so proud of you for getting the crisis cleaning done, one baby step at a time. You can do this. You got seven minutes to get get relaxed. I want you to take the next seven minutes and just enjoy yourself. It's been good helping you through this. I love y'all. See you later. Bye.
One, two, three. Radio. 